Yeah, this is a story about all these names etched in stone and etched in the memories of friends and families, all these lost loved ones who served and died in Vietnam, as well as the wounded who uh, served and survived Vietnam. Mothers and fathers, brothers and sisters, husbands and wives, all suffering and separating because of the fighting in Vietnam. Get the machine guns up here. Our team got hit and I got wounded. But still writing from Vietnam. From the house. They were all over us before we knew what was happening. Many letters asking for prayers, some simply saying goodbye. Pull up, pull up, boy. Get up there. Please don't worry about me. I love you, Clee. You know, let's let's tell your wife. Let's tell your wife what happened. Tara Reeves wasn't even born wife. yet when her dad letter. sent his letter from a Vietnam battlefield hospital, not knowing then if he'd ever see his family again. A young man from Georgetown, South Carolina. He's a very much decorated Marine, Lieutenant Cleve McClary. But in 1969, Cleve McClary made it back from Vietnam with half an arm, a missing eye, and a story to tell. You have never lived until you nearly died. Maybe that doesn't mean a great deal to you. It didn't to me until I nearly died. About 10 or 12 of the enemy, what we call a sapper unit, probably better known to you as a suicide squad, started running up the hill. These men had grenades tied around their waist. As I got near, another grenade came in. As it did, I threw my hand up, it exploded, it blew my left eye out. A couple other grenades came in and took the legs out from under. As I was going through the air, all I could think of was, man, where's my shotgun? As I reached back for it, I realized- I reached back my shotgun, I realized a blast had blown my left arm off. It's a story McClary still tells today as a retired Marine, now in his 80s, with his wife Deanna at his side. Oh, I begged him not to go to Vietnam. I pleaded with him. But there's a Marine car in front of your house. And this is happening every day in the same scene that we all know that when the car is there, it usually means they're dead. So when they and their story the of that and night they, on that these, hill in Vietnam, well, it's still just as vivid now as it was more than 50 years ago. It really is, and, and, and they have a hard time because it, it brings back me memories you're trying to put out of, your, out of your head, and I go blank on that hill quite a bit. I lay there, it seemed like hours. I never wanted to live so bad in my life. If I could only see my men get off that hill alive. If I could see my wife one more time. When he stood up there, they all stood. When he finished speaking, they all stood. But I was scared to death. Man, I was petrified. Even in the hospital, I really didn't know how she was going to react. She said, well, he's alive. I went, what? He's alive? The letter that came a few days later, dictated by her husband in his hospital bed, to help gave Deanna hope, and so, so did the letter process. writer. Lucy Caldwell, USO. And I thought, who is Lucy Caldwell to be in there with this bloodied body and sitting there letting me know he's alive? I always wondered. I've written this letter exactly as your husband has asked me to. It is an and years later, rereading that same letter, their daughter Tara so wondered too. Us all. Lucy Caldwell, USO. I started Googling Lucy Caldwell. I thought, you know, I'm just going to explore who this woman is. Well loved and well remembered by all alumni. That search brings us to football Saturdays here at Princeton University. Here the Tiger fans cheer the first touchdown in the victory over Yale. Where Lucy Caldwell was the wife and widow of longtime Hall of Fame Princeton coach Charlie Caldwell. But at age 56, and now alone, Caldwell left her home in Princeton for Vietnam as a volunteer, spending three years at the USO in China Beach. The Princeton papers are filled with stories about Caldwell, known and denying as Lucy Baby. 
collecting donations from friends back home for all those weary Marines in the middle of a war zone. But in Vietnam's battlefield hospital wards, Caldwell was best known for spending countless hours comforting the wounded and writing hundreds of letters for those injured Marines known as Lucy's Boys, including a young lieutenant from South Carolina named Cleve McCleary. And uh, in this field hospital, he could not see, so he, he never saw Lucy. Hmm. But in this hospital, when he did regain consciousness, uh, this precious woman, and he remembers her sweet voice uh, and probably the click of her heels, she sat beside his bed and befriended him. She got Daddy to talk about his patrol and what, I mean, that's, that's a real gift. You know, I, I can only imagine her sitting next to his bed just kind of coaxing it out of him and what a tremendous role that was. I didn't know any of that till well, really, just recently, who she was. Yeah. But I remember her being there. And then she wrote some other letters, too, I think. In fact, Lucy wrote a book about all those letters for all those injured Marines, letters that often prepared their loved ones for those injuries, too. He was there in the bed, and he said, Honey, it's me. It's me. I know I'm not too pretty to look at, but I thank God I'm alive to be with you right now. And for those Marines who didn't make it home from the hospital, well, many of those Lucy letters were also their last letters. Lucy was a mother too, and I think putting her heart in that mother's heart or that wife's heart, you know, this is what I would want to hear. But I think Lucy recognized the value in a handwritten note. These are treasures. By the way, the title of Lucy Caldwell's book is S.I.N. One Way, Economy Class, which refers to her plane ticket to Singapore on the flight that eventually landed Lucy Caldwell in Vietnam. It's a flight that countless Marines and Marine families are glad that Lucy made because of the difference that Lucy made in their lives while she was there. Thanks for watching, and if you don't want to miss any more great regional stories, please subscribe to our PBS Charlotte YouTube channel.